We raised money too early for this startup, and unfortunately, we spend money on all the wrong things, and we overhired. Good decisions, bad decisions, but overall, we overhired. And that was a huge mistake. But there's something that we did right, and that's one thing, that was SEO. This is a screenshot us outperforming Hootsuite and biggest competitors out there with huge marketing budgets. And we were outperforming them on the first page of Google for the most competitive keywords. And on the right side, we see a screenshot from our WordPress getting all the inbound leads uh, from our, all, our SEO initiatives, really. All this 90% of inbounds were coming from SEO. And it's interesting because SEO, this is where we spend least amount of money. It was run by three people. It was run by, at that time, Spencer, our copywriter, who just graduated at the University of New Jersey. He was writing part-time. And we hired um, one of the best SEO specialists out there, Sasha Hoffman. Uh, please reach out to him. He's one of the best there. He's out of Germany, and he has a lot of startups. He was working on this part-time, too. Um, so basically, three people, two of them working part-time, and we were outranking our competitors. We we're outranking biggest unicorns for the most competitive keywords. And this content is still out there on the first page of Google, which is very surprisingly. And during this time where we were working on Brief Bit, our first marketplace, I started a passion project. Um, I started writing. I really enjoy writing. And I started writing about my friends. Most of my friends are early stage founders or SaaS founders, bootstrappers. And in the world of PR, no one likes to write about startups for some reason. No one likes to write about early stage. It's not as sexy as raising millions of dollars. So unfortunately, journalists don't cover them. So I decided to write about my friends or underserved founders. And I used the knowledge um, of SEO to get them on the first page of Google as well. I started creating listicles, like top video startups to watch for, or best SaaS deals. Um, basically, I started looking at SEO differently. I, I looked at what people are searching for instead of what companies are offering. And so a lot of people were searching for SaaS deals. And I'm like, let's create a, a listicle of all the cool SaaS deals out there, put all my friends there. And this is interesting because now every year I put together best SaaS deals for Cyber Monday or Black Friday. If you guys are having a SaaS deal, please reach out. I'm happy to put it um, on this article, which is coming soon. And one thing that I, I stumbled upon, which was really interesting, I wrote a very small article, which was under 400 words. It was a press release um, about our pivot. So we pivoted at the end of 2021 from Marketplace to Decklinks. And it was a very short article that I wrote under 400 words. It was barely SEO optimized. And it got on the first page of Google and have outperformed Global Mail. So you know how everyone is telling you that you need to have a lot of backlinks, and you need to compete with the big guys, so you need to have as many backlinks as they have, which is true. But you can also have a very strong topical authority. You see, my startup publication only writes about B2B SaaS startups. And Global Mail writes about everything else. So you see, my topical authority is more and more important here. So Google uh, ranks me much, much higher. Another interesting experiment, we realized that uh, when you stop writing, you're still getting traffic. So in a brief bit, our old previous startup, the last article we wrote was in, back in 2021. That was a big press release we did when we partnered up with ClearCo. And we wrote a small, small article about this. And that was the last time we ever wrote anything on BriefBit. This is a screenshot for our last year, for the last 12 months. And we haven't written anything since 2021. Obviously, we don't have as, as high traffic as we had when we were consistently publishing. But we're still getting all those traffic. Imagine paying Google AdWords for, to get 14,000 clicks. That's a lot of money. And we haven't published anything since 2020, 2021. So this is, brings me to the main topic and the reason why I'm doing this talk to you. Um, this is something that you can build and you can start early. And you can get into SEO, and it will help you build your moat. Because first, it's very, very measurable. It has that predictable growth that's very important for a startup. The second thing, it compounds over time unlike sales outreach or Google paid ads. 
the leads that we're getting from search are highly, highly convertible. And if you are going to be on the first page of Google with all the unicorns and the biggest company out there, this builds trust with your ICP, it builds trust with your audience. But most importantly, and I really want to really want to focus on this one, if you do a SEO right, it will be really hard for your competitors to kick you out of the first positions. It will be really hard for them. At least it will take them some time to get to you. So start as early as you can. So a few things I want to share that helped me think differently about SEO. SEO is not about you, your company, your startup, what it does. It has nothing to do with that. SEO is all about your ICP, what they search for, and how well you can connect those dots. So there's a lot of places where you can look and see where, where your ICP is hanging out. You can look at Core and Reddit. There's paid tools like, like Ahrefs. There's Ubersuggest. It gives you a lot of ideas what your ICP is searching for. Also, the search section. We have people also ask section. This is really great ideas to write huge clusters of supporting articles of what people are searching for, right? And build that topical authority around the same topic. Sorry, my clicker doesn't work. Hold on. Oh, all right. OK, so this is how we used this strategy for BriefBit. So BriefBit was a marketplace, remember? It was a media planner, marketplace, a lot of things. But we were targeting junior media buyers. Those junior media buyers and media planners, they were Googling things like, what is TRP? What is GRP? They were trying to Google definitions. They were not Googling, what, okay, what is the media planner? What should I do for a media planner? They were asking specific terminology. So we created a definition list, almost like a glossary for which definition we created an article. And that's how they organically find out, found out about our media planner and about our marketplace. We use exactly the same strategy for Decklinks. So for the context that Ton mentioned, Decklinks is a platform for sharing and creating video PDFs. We have nothing to do with ChatGPT. We have no, absolutely no AI in our startup. But we are targeting salespeople. And a lot of salespeople are asking, how can I use ChatGPT for sales? So we wrote a guide on how they can use and leverage ChatGPT for sales. Although we have nothing to do with ChatGPT. So you see what we do here. And we got this guide on the first page. We got in the snippet. We're getting uh, quite a bit of traffic from this page. So we started to do similar articles for other ICP. Our content, uh, our, our product is horizontal, so we have multiple ICPs. So we started creating multiple, uh, multiple articles for different ICPs. Does anyone know what CPOC diagram is? Here, no? We didn't know what CPOC diagram either. We had no idea what CPOC diagram is. Our clients were Googling this. They were using uh, PDFs to put together CPOC diagrams and sharing. So we wrote about CPOC diagram. Again, we have nothing to do with CPOC. We had no idea what CPOC is, but we were writing about it because our clients were doing it. Same thing with other use, uh, useful content and helpful content. If you're going to take one thing away from this presentation is create helpful content for your ICPs. Now, AI made SEO more accessible to Bootstrap founders, and that's that's so true, because right now, the cost per article went down. You can produce high quality content with less people. And you can also optimize your content way better with all the, all the really cool AI tools out there. But because it's accessible to, to you, it's also accessible to your competitors. So it's, it's really, really easy. It's, 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 it's competitive out there. Uh, and Google knows that. Google knows that there is a high injection of content. And my Clicker doesn't work again, sorry. Oh, here. So Google knows that there's going to be high injection of AI content out there. And Google changed definition. So instead of helpful content created by people for people, Google has changed the definition, created content for, for people. So they dropped by people. So they know that there's going to be a lot of content created with AI. So how does Google? Ra ranks content these days. So how are they going to prioritize AI content? They know that there's going to be a lot of content written by AI tools. So in the beginning, well, actually, the, 
it was the last year, end of last year, they introduced the, this framework. It's called EATS, E-E-A-T, and they're leading with it right now. It stands for Experience, Expertise, Authority, and Trust. They're looking for content that's written from first-hand experience. This is very important. They know that AI content doesn't do that. Um, so they're looking specifically for content that comes from real person and from real first-hand first experience. So one interesting thing, we ran an experiment. We were trying to optimize for keyword founders-led sales. Some of our clients are founders. They use it uh, for, uh, they use decklings to send proposals to their clients so they can track it. So we thought we're going to write the most comprehensive guide about founders-led sales. And we collaborated with Duane Default. He is known for founders-led sales approach, one of the greatest coaches out there for sales. And we put together an article with him about founders-led sales. Most of this article was written from his experience, from first-hand experience. And Google has recognized this. Google bumped us all the way to the top. We got into the snippet within two weeks. And it's interesting, because this is a, a screenshot I took from HubSpot. And some of the people come from this article or from ChatGPT for sales. They bookmark it. And within two weeks, we have people visiting our website for 25 times. And they visit 56 pages. That means they have bookmarked us somewhere. And they're coming back to our content. This is a great signal to Google. All right. Um, another, another thing I wanted to show you is that Content collaboration is king. And I know as founders, we are we're used to do everything on our own. We used to do everything with our team. But with, when it comes to content, you can collaborate out there with industry experts. You, you can collaborate with other companies. And you can create content together with them. So this is one of the examples that uh, I did for my publication. I wanted to write an article about how to find a startup lawyer. So I asked our lawyer to put together some insights, an outline, and collaborate on the article together. And this is very interesting, because we wrote an article. We got on the second page. Then we got on the first page. It took us a while. But I want to give you a very, very practical tip here that got us on the first position of Google. It's the bio section. Every time when we write an article, we put a bio section. And even with the bio section, we still didn't get on the first position. So what we did differently about this, we hyperlinked. I hyperlinked the name of our lawyer, and I linked it his, to, to his LinkedIn profile. So you see, I showed Google that this person exists. This person is credible. There is an actual uh, lawyer, and the, all his credentials is on Google. And as, and as soon as I as soon as I hyperlinked it, there was another crawler that went through my website. Within that week, it put me on the first page and on the on the first position. So that's just a little hack. If you're going to collaborate, write an author section with a picture of the client or your collaborator or whether an expert with a little bio section that's rel related to the content that you're writing, because Google is looking at this as well, and hyperlink either the company or their LinkedIn. And it works. All right? And I don't know why the clicker doesn't work. Maybe I need to eat more. Oh. Wait. <laughs> oh, here you go. All right. OK, so just to summarize this, um, this is how we use EAT at Decklinks. For expertise, we collaborate with industry experts. The reason why we do this is because instead of how to do articles, we create how I did articles, which comes from first-hand experience. Great signal to Google that you know what you're talking about. And please, guys, collaborate with industry experts. You guys have the product. They have the expertise. Why not put together content? Now, when it comes to experience, we build topical clusters and create content with our customers. Because your customers are experts in the industry where you have products. They're using your products. Why not collaborate with your customers? And they love it when you collaborate with them. Uh, for authority, we include first-party data, some research. You can include infographics, surveys. Basically, you have to create opportunities for others to reference you. That's how you're getting uh, great backlinks. And for trust, we have experimented with different sources. Very interesting. For some reason, Google prioritizes reputable sources like research papers 
Google prioritized sources like uh, universities, government official websites. So if you're going to write a, and add some kind of a stat, make sure this is a reputable source. Um, and I think that's, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this was full of practical tips that you can take home and apply to your startups. I think uh, it's bootstrappers, we need to find hacky ways uh, to outperform all the big guys out there. And I hope you use this and build a moat with your SEO. Feel free to reach out, find me on LinkedIn. I also run boot camps where I teach SEO my entire process to founders.